All right, major changes happening in the U.S. housing market. Changes that now have a lot of people thinking home builders are regretting their 2023 build for rent, build for sale portfolio mixture, assuming they've now locked themselves into a looming disaster. Now, what's going on is a lot of people are taking this new Redfin article about investor demand plummeting and running with it before doing due diligence. Because the truth is, investor market share, unfortunately, has yet to fall at all. I saw lots of YouTubers jumping on this Redfin article even CNBC ran with it but take a look at the article when you look at just the headline you'll see what happened here it says investors are buying roughly half as many homes as they were a year ago and investor home purchases fell a record 46 percent year over year in the fourth quarter all true but context matters investor home purchases fell the most on record in q4 well that wasn't unique to investor purchases home sales across the board have fallen to record lows investor market share though the metric that actually tells you if investors are fleeing the housing market unfortunately is still at all-time highs and actually increased from q3 to q4 22 which you could see further down in that same article they actually write this while many investors have pumped the brakes on home buying investor market share has remained fairly steady so unfortunately investors aren't fleeing the housing market not yet anyways this is why we need to be very careful when we read these redfin headlines they seem to be like the worst with this clickbait garbage and don't forget it was just last month when redfin tried hoodwinking all of us into believing that the housing market had troughed back in November and that the market's beginning this magical strong recovery. I made a video the same day their CEO said that calling BS on it and the same thing is happening right now. Unfortunately what Redfin's saying fits a lot of crash commentators narratives so they don't bother checking the data. Now after seeing the response that this article got on social media that being that everyone now thinks that investors have completely exited the housing market I found something interesting in the brand new housing start data that the census bureau just released something that may help us get to the bottom of this now to my complete surprise in q4 2022 something major changed in the home building industry and not in a good way take a look at this when the census bureau released their new housing start completion data set last week they also released the numbers on the purpose and design of these new housing starts a data set that that, that they released separately and what you see is that for the first time ever going back to when they began tracking this information so back in 1974 the mixture in the purpose of these builds change you can visualize this here with the blue line being housing starts built for sale and the orange line being housing starts built for rent and what you'll notice is in q4 22 we see houses built for sale versus houses built for rent invert basically home builders began building more homes to rent than they did to sell it's the first time this has ever happened. Now ask yourself, why would they do this if investors have completely fled the housing market? You could see it better if we just zoom in on just the last few years, which I could do like this, and there we go. So for the first time, home builders on a national level are now building more homes for the purposes of renting them out than they are building to sell them. So why is that? Why are home builders choosing to build this specific mixture now? I mean, right now seems like the worst possible time to be doing that. Well, you may have heard the term build for rent or build for rent communities. If you haven't, some of the largest home builders in the country have whole divisions of their companies specifically for this this purpose. The largest home builder in the country, for example, DR Horton, has huge build for rent operations in play right now. And what they do is they build these massive communities of homes, usually with a few hundred units per community, but sometimes with a few thousands of units in total without any contracts in place from buyers. And they do this with the intent to complete the community and rent the homes out to people like you and me. And then once it's fully rented, they don't just become landlords forever. They then sell the communities to large investment companies in one large block, one massive package, and usually they make huge returns doing this. You can see here in DR Horton's 2022 annual report released a few weeks ago, what they say about this. Our rental segment consists of multifamily and single family rental operations. The multifamily rental operations develop, construct, lease, and sell residential rental properties, but the single family rental operations primarily construct and lease single family homes within a community and then market each community for a bulk sale of rental homes and this has changed across the board if you look at the type of houses currently under construction throughout the u.s housing market we see the same scenario playing out check this out look at the, all the homes 
currently under construction as of the end of January 2023. And look at the type of home. Again, like the housing starts by purpose and design that we just saw, we see a similar inversion happening here as well. Now we have significantly more units under construction for multifamily homes than we do for single family homes. Look closely at this chart. Nowhere going all the way back to 1985 do we see such a large inversion like this with multifamilies now being the predominant housing structure being built. You do see it the other way around right here though, where back in the 90s and early 2000s there were many, many more single family homes being built back then. And in retrospect, it's pretty clear that they over did it back then but you never see this the gap is widening and it's not just from the current mixture of homes under construction but for whatever reason these home builders are still choosing to build more multi-family houses as the data here shows in q4 22 even with rates topping out at seven percent in october these home builders were actively deciding making a choice to break ground on a record number of multi-family houses when compared to single family units this seems odd and in contradiction to all this talk about investors fleeing the housing market now well, we can further verify this by looking at the permits pulled last month and the months prior in big housing markets let's just go over to our authorized permits map and take a look so check this out look at for example king county washington total permits authorized 18,700. How many of those were for single family homes? Just 2,800. So roughly 80% multifamily homes versus 20% single family homes being built in the Seattle Metro. Just to be clear, in the Seattle Metro, what would you what you would normally see is the single family units be around 5 to 10% below the multifamily unit share. Right now we have an 80-20% split. It's a huge increase in the number of multifamily units versus single families. Let's look at another metro like Austin, Texas. A similar mixture, not as bad as Seattle but still way more multifamily being built than normal. 18,300 multifamily unit permits versus 7,600 single family units. Or if we keep going east to a market like Tampa, Florida, more than 60% of all homes being built in the Hillsborough County are multifamily units. The breakdown, as you see here, single family units, 5,700 versus 124 two unit homes, 791 three and four unit homes, and 10,802 homes with more than five plus units. Now this map also shows us the inventory breakdown for the county as well. So in the same Tampa Metro, we can see active listings are currently 22% below where they were in 2019, which means the Tampa area needs way more homes, folks, and would probably do better by not building so many multi-family structures that are going to end up being rented out. But there is some good news in the short term. Over the next couple of years, as this housing crash continues playing out, we should, and I just want to repeat, we should see less and less investor home buying, but it'll probably be short lived, probably around 2025, we'll begin to see their interest spike back up. The only reason why we expect a downturn in investor interest is due to the cost of borrowing money right now. If you're an investor, the return on your investment wouldn't make sense right now or shouldn't make any sense right now. I mean, the cap rate is too low, the yields on short term, on short -term treasuries are way too high, and the yield on the six month T-bill just broke 5%, which is crazy. And would be crazy you'd think for these investment firms not to jump at the chance to earn a 10% annual return. But if I were heading up one of these big investment funds, would I do that? I mean, ask yourself that, you know, as yourself. I mean, would you do that if you were in their position? Probably for the time being, I'd probably park our cash in six month treasuries and plan to go on a buying spree at the end of 2023. Just like all of us normal home buyers, we're waiting for a good entry point to purchase a home, right? Well, these CIOs running all this capital, they're not stupid. They're doing the same thing and they're coming up with ways right now to get around these high borrowing costs. At least that's what I would be doing.